Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Real, one of the dietitians here at MedCan. I'm here today with Dr. Adam Upshaw, whose PhD research has focused on protein and exercise metabolism. Um, when, are, when are these supplements warranted, these protein supplements warranted, uh, and, and when would you um, uh, encourage more food-based uh, sources? Um, for the most part, I'd say that they're not needed for the average individual, simply because most people get enough protein from regular food habits that right. they currently have. So they do have their place. So one of those aspects is uh, for a quick meal, if you can't sit down for a meal, protein powders are definitely beneficial as long as you're getting a protein powder that is um, on the cleaner side right. um, <laughs> of, of the market, I would, I would say. Um, and that's been measured for having exactly what's in it. It's one of those unregulated sort of products. Uh, so it definitely has its place, um, but I wouldn't suggest someone replace meals on a regular basis to have supplements. Right. A lot of the supplements do come with additives in it, so anything from added sugar and a lot of the protein powders, definitely you can see that in protein bars. There's, there's a lot of added food stuff, I'll say, yeah. in these uh, sort of substances. So we look on the ingredient list and just go through that list to see if there's really any added sugar. That's first and foremost. Any um, glucose, fructose, table sugar, honey, agave, maple syrup, cane juice, all those products, sugar across the board. And uh, any preservatives or additives uh, to those proteins. Um, how much is enough uh, for, for maintaining those day-to-day -day functions? How does that change as people become more active? And, and is there a point where we're getting too much? Yeah, I mean, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of debate in that area. So I'd say uh, the current recommendations are, as I'm sure you're aware, yeah. is 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. And that's sort of how much we tend to tell people on protein intake. A lot of the new research, though, is really going towards amounts higher than that. So really for the active um, or sedentary individual, we're really looking at around 1.2 grams to 1.8 grams per kilo kilogram of body weight of protein. So, I mean, that's, like I said, that's double, almost double yeah. uh, what the current recommendations are. And that's and, based on new uh, assessment. Yeah, it's based, based on new sort of uh, ways in which we can measure protein, which are much more uh, accurate, less invasive. Um, so does it differ for athletic population? It probably does. Uh, there's a couple of new studies out of uh, Western University of London, Ontario, looking at strength athletes and endurance athletes and protein intakes there. And yeah, they're putting the ranges up around two grams and above for endurance and strength athletes. And so although all protein food sources have all amino acids, some are deficient in some of those indispensable or essential amino acids. And they usually fall in those plant product categories. So, um, when I say there's some planning involved, it's because if you're only eating a few protein, plant protein sources, you may not be getting the complete amino acid profile. And when you're deficient in one indispensable amino acid, uh, all other amino acids will be oxidized. We say oxidized, meaning they won't be uh, incorporated into protein. So you'll be deficient. Right. So if you are a vegan, if you're a vegetarian, when we say planning, that just means getting a variety of sources of plant food stuffs and also like when you're thinking of grains and things like that. If you do that, you will meet your amino acid requirement. And the reason is grains uh, are a moderately good source of protein. Absolutely. Some grains are. Absolutely. All plant stuff with protein in it that you would consider protein do have complete profile of amino acid. Like I said, it's just some are lower on some of those essential amino acids than other proteins. Which I think is kind of a neat thing. Um, we don't typically think of grains as being a source of protein or a source of amino Absolutely. acids, but for, for people who are following a plant-based diet, even people who aren't, they can really um, uh, be good contributors. Let's get by that. Most people, like I said before, and as you mentioned, are getting enough protein uh, just from their course of the day meal intake. And so they're probably meeting the new guidelines and they don't need these extra um, foodstuffs that have added protein in it.